This is the new Bentley Continental GT Speed and it's a little bit like world boxing heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua because it's British. It's a big heavy brute and it packs one serious punch. However, being the speed, it's been into training, you know, to make it more agile. Yeah, 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 like that, you see. I've done two lessons of boxer's eyes and now I think I'm a contender, don't I? And this car, is it a contender? Well, to find out, I'm going to talk you through the upgrades visually, externally and internally over the normal GT speed. I'm actually out of breath. I'd be no good at boxing. <laughs> Get my head kicked in. I'm going to talk you through the engine upgrades, the chassis upgrades. Of course, I'm going to drive it, see what it's like, and I'm going to launch it, see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Now, I've come here to a disused US air base in Sicily to test a car from Britain just up the road from me, obviously. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the power. So, you've got a six liter twin turbo W12, but unlike the one that you get in the normal Continental GT, power's been increased from 635 horsepower to 659. You still get the same 900 newton meters of torque, and it still drives all four wheels via an eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with launch control. As for Nord 16, should take 3.5 seconds, which is 0.1 of a second quicker than the normal W12 Conti GT. But what will it do in reality? Well, stick with this video because I will be launching it later and timing it myself. Styling upgrades on the speed are minimal. Here at the back, there's not much that's different. You can get an optional GT Speed styling pack, which includes this carbon fiber strip here, and you can get an upgraded Akrapovic exhaust with quad tailpipes, but this car obviously doesn't have that. It's just got the normal ovals. Oh crap, a Vich. At the side, the speed gets more pronounced side sills, and these are in carbon fibre because it's got that upgrade pack. You've also got the speed logo there. You've got unique 22 inch alloy wheels, and look, you get the metallic fuel filler cap. That's standard. Here at the front, the only design change for the speed is this sort of like smoked effect on the grill mesh and down here as well. And that's your lot, subtle. Ish, well, not that solid, it's a big Bentley, but you get the idea. Here on the inside, upgrades for this speed include Alcantara on the steering wheel, feels nice and sporty. Alcantara on this center console. Alcantara on the seats here to help grip your body and keep you in place when you're going fast around corners. There's also two-tone leather trim. Then you've got speed logo up there, speed logo on the dash and speed logo on the sills. You also get this diamond quilting as standard and a new type of brushed aluminium dark gray trim for the center console. All very nice, but all very expensive. So I've got the spec sheet for this car here. And this one starts at 209,900 pounds, which is quite a lot. Now, if you fancy a luxurious feeling sporty coupe, but for a lot less money than that, cling on the pop-out banner up there to go to car wow. Also put a link in the description below. Go check out the car and the saving you can get on it. Actually, there's, there's even more spent on this car. It's got like 50,000 pounds worth of options. So yeah, one of them costs 12,000 pounds. Let's find out what that is. So this car is fitted with the upgraded carbon ceramic brakes. So you've got 440 millimeter discs up front, gripped by 10 piston calipers, 410 millimeter discs at the back, gripped by four piston calipers. So apparently these give you really consistent stopping performance without fade. You can do 10 hard stops with this car and the braking distance should only increase by one meter. But how good are they in reality at bringing this big thing to a complete stop? Let's find out. We're gonna do a brake test. See how long it takes this car to stop from 70 miles an hour. Let's do it. Full emergency stop. Oh, Bentley safeguard <laughs> flipped up on the screen. Thought I was gonna have a massive accident. Okay. Ooh, it stopped from 70 miles an hour in 44 meters, which isn't bad for such a big heavy car. Those brakes work. The biggest changes to this speed over the normal Continental GT are to the chassis. For instance, it gets rear wheel steering as standard, which makes it more manoeuvrable in town and more agile when you're driving it. Bentley's engineers have also recalibrated the stability control system to make the car more playful. The four wheel drive system has been set up to be specifically rear wheel drive in feel. So only 30% of the available torque will ever go to the front wheels. And if you're sliding the car, the car will only send 
80 newton meters to the front wheels, so it doesn't pull you out of your drifts. You can just slide for as long as you dare. The steering ratio has been quickened for faster responses. And finally, there's now an electronically controlled limited slip differential on the rear axle, which should make the car easier to skid. So, shall we test that out? Let's see if it's possible to behave badly in a Bentley, darling. So, I'm going to turn the stability off. I'm going to get rid of this stupid accent and um, let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, it'll go, it'll go, it'll go, it'll go, it'll go. Can we go the other way though? That's a question. Let's give it the other way. Oh yeah, it's a bit of a crazy big car this, isn't it? Right, that's enough of that, it's a bit silly. It's a bit silly. Let's be sensible. Still got to drive on the road and launch it. Need to save some tyres for that. Here in the back, it's very much like the normal Continental GT, so it's fairly tight. Thankfully, you can roll down the rear window to let some air in. But being the speed, you do get the nice seats like they do in the front, like with the speed logo and the Alcantara and the two-tone colorway. It's all right. Of course, the boot is the same size as the normal Continental GT, so you can fit some golf clubs in here, some luggage, a human being as well. But the capacity is only 358 litres. So if you need more space, you're probably going to want a Bentley Bentayga. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can go watch my in-depth video review of that car. There's also a link in the description as well. Anyway, that brings you on to five annoying things about this car. The Speed is supposed to be the most dynamic version of the Continental GT, yet it weighs 30 kilos more than the standard car. Tips of scales at 2.3 tonnes, which means it's heavier than a Lamborghini Urus. Even though this car has the mightiest engine of the Bentley range, you can only rev it to 3,000 RPM when you're standing still, so you can't really enjoy the exhaust. Waffle. It's all right, but I'd like to be able to redline it standing still to be a total Bentley hooligan. Sometimes when a car manufacturer makes a sportier model, they upgrade the tyres to those that are more grippy. However, with this Continental GT Speed, you get the same Pirelli P0s as on the normal car. Not really a Pirelli fan, more of a Michelin guy. Hashtag, no ad. You think that on a car that costs £210,000, you get adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist as standard like you do on something like a Toyota Yaris. But oh no, it's part of a £6,000 touring pack. The cheeky b****. For some reason, when you're manoeuvring at low speeds, the rather expensive optional carbon ceramic brakes make the noise of a gaggle of geese. Listen. And that brings you on to five cool things about this car. So Bentley has retuned the active anti-roll control and the three-chamber air suspension so that it's sportier when you have the car in sport mode than the standard Continental GT, yet they've managed to retain the comfort when you have it in comfort mode. The 8-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox has been retuned, so when you put it into sports mode, the shifts are 50% faster than in the normal Continental GT. The optional carbon ceramic brakes actually reduce the car's weight by a total of 33 kilograms, and that's 33 kilograms of unsprung mass, and if you can reduce the unsprung mass, you can improve the handling. There's lots of interior personalization available with this car. So you can get 15 different colors of main interior leather and 11 different colors of the secondary leather. Oh, the poor cows. The GT Speed is the fastest serious production Bentley you can currently buy with a top speed of 208 miles an hour. Now that is only just one mile an hour more than the standard W12 Continental GT. But anyway, it's still a bragging right, isn't it? Oh, I like the look of this. Hmm, I think I might steal this. Oh, <laughs> it's boiling up. Ah, serves you right. F off. Right, let's see what this Continental GT Speed is like to drive. Whack it straight into sports mode, no messing around. First bend, very tight. <laughs> now, this is a big, heavy car, it is. You know, 2.2, 2.3 tonnes. And so you do have to watch it. But they have done so much to this car chassis that it really does just grip and hold on where you would expect it to start pushing wide. You can really feel the drive to the back. So only 30% of the power going to the front. So it's got this real rear drive feel to it. They've recalibrated the steering to make it sharper. That limited slip differential on the rear axle just helps put the power down where you've got the most grip. <laughs> you combine it with this bonkers engine and you've got so much performance. It's nuts, right? <laughs> now, I could be brave 
and put the stability control in sport because they've tweaked it slightly to make the car more playful. I've just got to find it, looking down, can I do it? Maybe my cameraman can help. Guy, can you press the button for the stability? Is it, that's it, not all the way off. You'll have me dead. We'll just do sport mode, there we go. <laughs> so it'll let the car be a little bit looser, but not too loose that we end up going off and into an olive grove. Oh yes. It's amazing that a car like this that is brilliant for just cruising around, looks great, it's like sitting inside some expensive handbag, can actually give you a sporty, almost sports car-like driving experience. <laughs> they are quite sharp when you first touch them, so when you're just pootling around, you can end up headbanging the steering wheel because they do just bite really hard. But when you're on a twisty road like this and you're trying to reduce a lot of speed from such a big, heavy car and you've got all that kinetic energy <laughs> just like building up in the car, they are so good at just staying strong and not fading and having you just run off the road and into a tree, which obviously isn't a good thing, especially when you're in a car that's over 200,000 pounds and you've signed a disclaimer, which means that you'll pay for it if you break it. I'm not gonna break it. One of the reasons I'm not going to break it is the fact that this car has special suspension, which it's an anti-roll system that stops it leaning so much in the bend. So it really does just hook up and grip so you can go round faster than you really should be able to. And it does just add to the fun. But Bentleys aren't just about fun, they're about luxury and comfort. So I'm going to whack the car into comfort mode and my three chamber air suspension now is all slackened off. And I can just waft around and let's go into automatic mode for the gearbox. It's an eight speed dual clutch system. So when you're changing gears yourself, it's lightning fast. It's the same gearbox you get in Porsches, by the way. However, when you put it into automatic mode, it's pretty good at slurring the gears together so you can just waft about in Bentley luxury. Oh yes. What's that? You wanna know how quick this thing is from all to 60, don't you? Let's do it. This car's supposed to do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds, but what's the reality? Specialist timing gear up here, gonna launch it. Left foot on the brake, everything in sports mode, for the throttle, launch control is activated, release brake. Oh, that hooked up. 3.56 seconds, 3.56, so 0.06 of a second slower than it should be. Bad, bad work, Bentley, bad. Anyway, let's try again. I'm talking to Bentley like they're a blooming dog. <laughs> it's just shit on the floor. <laughs> let's do it again. Because <laughs> you can do it over and over again. Three point six one. Bad Bentley. Bad. I'm picturing Bentley as being like this big old golden retriever that slobbers a lot. Anyway, one last time. <laughs> Three point six one again. Do you know what? What's point one of a second between friends, eh? So then, what's my final verdict on the new Bentley Continental GT Speed? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it, or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, the Bentley Continental GT is a lovely car and the speed is the pinnacle of the range. And so if you can afford it, you should just go right ahead and buy it. Yes, I'm very good at spending your £210,000 for you. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel. Why haven't you? Also, if you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, I'll give you a cookie. <laughs>